Uh, and he there, found his way out to guys guys can i just say what was what was maybe even more triggering about this is that he found his way out of the side of the trailer what, are the, what do you guys call it the pit the not sandbox what is going on guys it's jj here back with a new video and this is a sort of our imola highlights uh, not highlights it's our imola wrap-up video uh we took a look at the imola grand prix just a little bit earlier today unbelievable race i went into that weekend expecting Ferrari to run away with it. Um, I think the sprint race was kind of a telltale that Red Bull might have had a better game plan going forward with Imola. The sprint race for stopping uh, and, and Checo Perez were amazing, but Carlos Sainz did so damn well to come back from P10 all the way to P4 in the sprint race to give them a couple extra points. Charles Leclerc getting out sprinted by Max Verstappen, and I think they kind of went into that thinking that it was gonna be a different way, that they could sort of reverse their fortunes when it came to the actual Grand Prix race, turned out to be the exact opposite for Ferrari. Red Bull going one, two, getting an absolute storm over race. Lando Norris finishing in the top 10 to the third race in a row. The third race in a row, he finished what? Seventh at Jeddah or eighth at Jeddah, one of the two. Um, and then finished what, fifth? Don't quote me on that, fifth at Australia? And now a third, now on the podium. So big up to Lando, because Lando gang, we're here. But absolute nightmare for Ferrari. Carlos Sainz getting pretty much ran into by Daniel Ricciardo from McLaren, which you can't put that on, on Carlos Sainz. Cause I think he had a good start. He was stuck behind Charles Leclerc, who got a really bad start in the Grand Prix. And then Charles Leclerc um, airing out the Ferrari car, popping it off of, off of one of the turns um, and spinning, and then falling all the way back to P6. Uh, a really, really bad weekend for Ferrari in Italy. Really unfortunate weekend. And it has sort of reopened up the Drivers' Championship and the Constructors' title. Because Red Bull got the one too. So, we'll take a look at, at maybe the weakness of Ferrari revealed in the weekend review for Ferrari and probably all the cars in general uh, from Drive61. Great YouTube channel. They, they put out great, great content. So, check out the original video in the description. Um, but yeah, let's get into the video. As well, guys, you can find the original video down in the description below. That was a difficult weekend for Ferrari. An insane weekend. On lap one, and Leclerc in the barrier and recovering to only sixth position. So what exactly happened to both drivers and what does it mean in the title fight? First up... I... I know, I know they're probably going to go in more in depth than I ever could for it. I think it's a bit of an overreaction to say Ferrari are... are uh, don't have the upper hand still. I mean... Their, their, maybe the technical side of, of their weakness was revealed with Imola. Driving in the weather appears to have been a huge, huge thing. Which I think that's probably what they're going to talk about. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but I think Ferrari are still okay, guys. I think they are still very much in the fight. Science. He had his off in qualifying, ending up in the wall at Rivazza in qualifying too. He tried to carry a bit too much speed into the corner, having turned in on the curb, which was likely a little bit damp and the rear of his car just didn't want to stick. This was another mistake by Science, which cannot have done his confidence much good. Now, I'm not 100% on whether this spin was due to the curb being damp or Carlos not predicting the balance of the Ferrari properly, but either way, the result was the same. Science then went on to have a good drive in the sprint. A great drive, a great position. drive. However, his start for the Sunday race wasn't great, getting overtaken by Norris and then being in a position where he was wheel to wheel with Ricardo. Ricardo was ahead going down into turn one, but Sainz had much more confidence on the brakes, which you can often do when you're on the outside. This is where a little lockup or a bit too much speed won't cause too much of an issue like it might do if you're on the inside of another driver. And Sainz did everything right here. He gave Ricardo it was Daniel Ricardo's fault. plenty of room. It was Daniel Ricardo's fault. Running around the outside like this is always a risk. Wet conditions, the busyness of the star, and cars that are heavy with fuel means judging the braking point and entry speed into the first turn is an extremely tricky estimation. And the balance between gaining time and not going off is what it's all about. And that's not to say that science shouldn't go around the outside. He's racing with the best drivers in the world. He's counting on their estimations of grip and entry speed. However, the risk of being taken out is more than it would be if you were on the inside of the one. And sometimes mm. the starts just play out like that. And as a driver, you have to drive into the space. Meanwhile, on the inside of the quarter, Ricardo was coming into turn two on the limit 
with the rear of the McLaren a little bit lively and he was having to correct it all the way into the apex. He then touched the kerb on the inside which overloaded the rear tyres even more and made the car step sideways across into Sainz. And it was this bit of extra over And he found his way out to... Guys, guys, guys can I just say what was, what was maybe even more triggering about this is that he found his way out of the side of the track. What, are the, what do you guys call it? The pit? The... Not sandbox. But, like, the Ferrari couldn't get its way out because Carlos Sainz immediately gassed it and the two the wheels just kept spinning and, and beached him. Whereas Daniel Ricciardo found his way out of that situation and continued to race. Had got the oversteer, the two would have made it it's so annoying. Just fine, as Daniel's racing line was good. So, really, this was Daniel's fault. It was him who misjudged the entry speed and slid wide into Sainz. Granted, it's extremely difficult to get this exactly right especially when there are lots of cars moving around you. But in this case, Daniel made the misjudgment. Next up, Leclerc's big mistake. And yeah. what exactly happened? But first, would you like to win $1,000? Yes. Well, there are only yes, five days left to join our new newsletter and potentially win $1,000. Oh, goodness. Oh, oh. We'll, 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 to we'll sit through the plug. Sit through the plug. Up. Also, it's going to be a great newsletter. Well, where uh, we send you the best insights into Formula 1 each week. So join up now, link bum, in the bum, description. Bum, 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 so bum, bum, okay, sorry, now we're back, now we're back. Good Hall of Points with a solid third position. But the strong will in the yeah, science, that's, yeah. he was pushing and he wanted to get... A he wanted Checo Perez, he wanted Checo Perez. He wanted Checo Perez. the best option when looking at the championship across the entire season. Personally, I like that Charles was really going for it. However, he went on to he did what Max would have done. spin shouldn't have happened today and that P3 was the best that I could do. We didn't have the pace for much more, and I was too greedy, and I paid the price for it. I lost seven potential points compared to the third place I was before. To be fair to Charles, this is really his first big mistake of the season. But he's right. If he's looking across the whole season, it's these mistakes that could be the difference between winning the championship and not. So what actually happened? Why, after doing so many laps over the weekend, couldn't Charles control his Ferrari across that curb. Well, first of all, the curbs at Varianta Alta are not just like normal red and white curbs, which are quite flat. These have this huge yellow extra curb on the inside. As we yeah, yeah it's so idiotic. Chicane. And of course, they're there to stop drivers simply driving straight across the chicane and gaining time. A driver can gain a lot of time in a tight chicane. It's often in the slower corners where you can win or lose more time than you can in the quick stuff because, of course, you're in the corner for longer. And I'd guess that the teams were looking at how good their cars were over these curves and would change the setup to help the cars through that section. In fact, the Ferrari did look pretty good over these curves. Of course, uh, but not, not, not when they needed it the most. The suspension setup of the cars yeah, but I look, especially with the weather involved, what... Also, they haven't quite got into the the weakness of Ferrari part of this video. What is what was the weakness of, of Ferrari? What what was what what, what was it? But in comparison to the other teams in 2022, the Ferrari is good over the curbs. So what happened here? Well, think about what's happening with the car through this section. The front of the car is loaded up when driving into the chicane. But as the driver reaches the apex of the corner and the inside curb, the inside tires are less loaded. The inside front tire then hits the yellow curb with force. However, the suspension will absorb quite a lot of this force. Where Leclerc went wrong on this lap was that he was trying to cut the apex off a little bit too much, trying to get closer to Perez and get DRS activation. He cut the corner so much that he actually the yellow curb with the underside of the car with the plank. The plank is simply part of the car. It's bolted onto the tub. So when it hits this curb, it's like hitting a ramp and it launches the entire car into the air. At this point, he was carrying too much speed. And when the car landed back on the track again, it slid too much. And with all of that happening so fast, it's near impossible to collect the slide again. And with that, Charles was facing the wrong way and unfortunately in the barrier luckily for him the damage wasn't too bad and he was able to recover to sixth position Only and he probably could have got more where he should have been in third if you enjoyed i mean so what i'm hearing is the ferrari problem is that charles leclerc got way too greedy way too early
Let's see what the comments are saying. Let's see what the comments are saying. Because, let's face it, guys, Red Bull have had some pretty disastrous, you know, weekends in these first two weekends. But they look the much more relaxed team when chasing. Like, Max Verstappen as a driver is better when he's chasing. He was amazing leading, actually, now that I say that. But, yeah. Danny Rick went to Carlos and apologized for him personally, which is sick. That's... Guys, I love Daniel Ricciardo. I think that's why I'm choosing McLaren as my team. Because I love Daniel Ricciardo. I love Lalo Norris. They're both hilarious. They're both genuinely nice guys. Um, the results may not always be there, but they are always sort of there in terms of personality. So that's nice. Uh, the recovery to P6 was a great recovery. Um, according to this, it's McLaren on the inside. I think it's just... It's just a weekend off, guys. I think it was a, just a, a really sad off weekend. I think Miami is going to be the big telltale of where the season's going to go. You've got Red Bull's got two wins. You've got Ferrari that's got two wins. Mercedes is kind of in the distance now. McLaren have already um, sort of closed the gap on the middle of the field. I think this weekend is where you see everything going, um, whether it's the extra DRS that's going to be involved, whether it's the sort of... Um, letting loose of the engines and whether it's maybe just the first time it being Miami there's going to be a huge US presence there I think this is going to be the big telltale weekend is the Miami Grand Prix so let me know what you guys think down in the comments below on Ferrari's weaknesses um, that they sort of revealed um, if they really have any I think both teams all of the teams obviously have mega weaknesses I think Ferrari has the least amount of them and I think they can still pull through it's just they need Carlos to finish a race not always his fault. I mean, this one wasn't his fault by any means. He did such a great job in the sprint. But they need Carlos to finish a race, and they need Leclerc to keep battling with Verstappen. So we're going to see. I think it's a long season. It's going to be a fun battle. Let me know what you guys think, though, down in the comments below. And peace.